Hi all, in this video we are going to see about G protein coupled receptors. So G protein coupled receptors are receptors that are important for hormonal action. Now from an exam point of view this question can be asked as a short essay and it is very important that we have an idea about how these G proteins work. So let's start. So G protein coupled receptors they are basically receptors that are present on the cell membrane surface. So see this is how the receptor would look like and as you can see it spans the cell membrane almost seven times right and why is it called G protein coupled because they are coupled with G proteins and what are G proteins? G proteins are basically proteins that are involved with GDP or GTP that is why they are called G proteins. So this receptor is usually coupled with this G proteins that is why it is called G protein coupled receptors okay so they are special receptors on the cell membrane that transmit signals from hormones into the cell by activating G proteins and these membrane proteins they are membrane proteins spanning the membrane seven times and that is why they are also called serpentine receptors because they look like snakes so they are called serpentine receptors or seven helix receptors that is another term for G protein coupled receptors so now we have to see in detail about what these G proteins are. So as I said G proteins that word G stands for guanosine triphosphate binding proteins or GTP binding proteins. So they, uh, there are, they are basically families of intrinsic membrane proteins and they link these receptors to the nearby effector molecules in the membrane. Okay. So basically G, G proteins or GTP binding proteins are intrinsic membrane proteins that link these receptor to the effector molecules so we can classify them classify the g proteins based on size so based on size you can divide them into large g proteins as well as small g proteins it is the large g proteins that are associated with these uh, g protein coupled receptors so these large g proteins they, com they are composed of three subunits alpha beta and gamma that is why they are also called heterotrimeric G proteins because they have got three different subunits. That is why it is called hetero. Hetero means different, trimeric means three. So it is normally the alpha subunit that is bound to the GDP in its inactive state. So by, by size you can classify them into large and small. It is the large G proteins that are bound to the GPCRs which contains three subunits and it is the alpha subunit which is bound to the GDP. Now here also we have got different families of G, pro G proteins like GS, GI, GT, GQ and G13. So what does all this stand for? GS protein coupled receptor stands for stimulatory uh, receptors whereas GI protein coupled receptors stand for inhibitor receptors. That means in GS protein coupled receptors the downstream events would be stimulatory whereas for GI the downstream events would be inhibitory. Now GQ protein coupled receptors, it is named GQ because they act via a specific mechanism. They activate the phospholipase C. See what this um, mechanism is, we will learn in a short while. So GQ receptors, they activate phospholipase C. So these are the three important families of large G proteins. Okay. Now we also have small G proteins. Here also we have got six subfamilies of which important ones are Rab, Rho and Ras. So these are not directly related to G protein coupled receptors but they have got function of its own. So for example the Rab family they are uh, involved with vesicle movements between organs and cell membranes. Then we have got the Rho family which controls the cytoskeleton and membrane interactions and the Ras family which transmits growth signals from membrane to nucleus. So thus we have seen that what, what uh, G protein coupled receptors are and what G proteins are. So now we will see the mechanism of action. So suppose this is a cell membrane and this is a G protein coupled receptor and here you can see that these G proteins are in an inactive state. Why do I say it's inactive? Because it is linked with GDP. The alpha subunit is linked with GDP which means the G proteins are now in an inactive state. But once a hormone binds on to this G protein coupled receptor then what happens? Then this GDP will be converted to GTP in which case you can tell that the G protein is active. Once the G proteins are activated what happens is the alpha subunit will dislocate 
and it will cause activation of other enzymes and that is how the binding of hormone will cause transmission of signals so this is how a g protein coupled receptor will work so how does it inhibit its action or how is it terminated see this alpha subunit has got an intrinsic gtpase activity which means it can convert the gtp back to gdp so now it is back to an inactive state so this is how the mechanism is terminated so thus we have seen how the g protein coupled receptor is activated and how its action is terminated so we will just see that in a flow chart manner now so the hormone receptor complex binds to the g protein coupled receptor when that happens the gdp is exchanged for gtp on the alpha subunit so the alpha subunit will dissociate from the beta and the gamma subunits and the dissociation will activate physiological signaling pathways and how is it terminated the gtpase activity of the alpha subunit converts the gtp back to gdp restoring the resting state so this is how the g protein coupled receptor will work so once this g protein uh, are activated what are the different effects that can occur it either it can open or close a cell membrane ion channels or it can change the activity of an enzyme in the cytoplasm of the cell or it can activate gene transcription so these are the methods by which the hormone will exert its effect so when g proteins are activated any of the three can occur and thereby transmit the signals so we'll just so when a g protein is activated this alpha subunit will dislocate and it can either cause Uh, an opening of ion channel or it can cause activation of an enzyme see in this case this is an enzyme the alpha subunit is activating it and once that happens it will cause activation of other second messengers now this is a very common method by which g protein coupled receptors will act and it is very important that we know more about the second messengers so what are the second messengers second messengers are basically molecules through which the hormones exert their intracellular effects okay so basically the hormones direct effect is limited to receptor activation and this is a second messengers that mediate the downstream intracellular actions so what are the different second messengers that we know of we've got camp which is cyclic adenosine monophosphate cgmp cyclic guanosine monophosphate ip3 which is inositol triphosphate dag diacylglycerol and calcium so through these second messengers the g protein coupled receptors will act so based on this we've got some systems like adenyl cyclase camp system guanyl cyclase cgmp system cell membrane phospholipid system and calcium calmodulin system so this is the mechanism by which the g protein coupled receptors will act via second messengers so thus we have seen what g protein coupled receptors are what g proteins are how it is activated how is it terminated and what are the effects or what effects occur when g proteins are activated of which we mentioned about the second messenger systems so now moving on to some applied aspects so suppose there are mutations of gene proteins g proteins in that case there can be diseases associated with it so the dysfunction may be due to increased g protein response or it may be due to decreased g protein response so we'll just see examples of uh, these diseases first one is dysfunction due to increased g protein response a good example of that is somatotroph tumor so here what happens is there is a mutation in the g protein alpha subunit in which the intrinsic gtpase activity is reduced what will happen if intrinsic gtpase activity is reduced the termination will not occur properly which means there will be prolonged g protein activity so there will be increased second messenger formation and this can lead to hyperplasia of somatotrophs in the anterior pituitary so if there are somatotrophs what will happen there will be increased amount of growth hormone production and thus patients can develop acromegaly so here the problem was in the improper termination of g protein activation another example is mckeown albright syndrome in which here the mutation causes increased g protein activity here and thus it can cause hyperpigmented areas on the skin and hypercortisolism so these are two examples in which there is a mutation in the gene protein that is leading to diseases there can also be dysfunction due to decreased g protein response so a good example of that is pseudo hyperparathyroidism type 1 pseudo hyperparathyroidism in which 
the G protein responds is less to the parathyroid hormone. So the hormone is there, but the effect is not there. So thus you can have hyperparathyroidism like features despite normal PTH levels. So these are two examples in which the G protein, the dysfunction of G protein is causing diseases. So thus if a short essay on GPCR is asked, you can write about the structure what G proteins are, the mechanism of action, that is you have to mention about the activation of how GTP is converted to GTP, how it is terminated, how GTP is converted back to GDP and the transduction via second messengers, especially via second messengers. I mention this because G protein coupled receptors mainly act via second messengers. So it is important that you mention the second messenger systems and give examples of the second messengers and finish it off with some applied aspects. So I hope this video was clear for you. Thank you.